It's Tuesday, which means it is time for the ABA tip of the week with uh, me, Dr. Shea, in Learn ABA with me. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is what I'm referring to as what the f function, uh, because I see on the messages in BCBA resources, like the posts and everything, a lot of people, and I did this when I was... Um, well, actually, all throughout my career, people getting lost in functional categories instead of very detailed analysis of relevant stimuli. So, like, what am I talking with? What the function? Uh, so, basically, and this is going to sound like heresy, but like, s stick with me. Uh, what I'm saying is that. There's the four functional classes, right? We have automatic, tangible, escape, and attention. And sometimes you'll have a behavior and it does not fit neatly into one of the four. It's like standing on the line between two of them, or it's got like 80% foot in one category and 20 in the other category. And it's easy to get stuck trying to like really relentlessly figure out which one it's going to fit neatly into. And what I'm saying is that it doesn't really matter. Um, and also it may never neatly fit into one of the categories. In one of his papers, I don't remember which one, if you want me to find it, I will and bring back the citation. So hit me up in the comments if you want that. Um, I believe Iwata had said he'd chosen those four categories in the original um, Iwata Dorsey four condition functional um, analysis because most behavior fell into one of those four categories, so it would capture the vast majority of functions. Um, but it's not the be all end all, it just covers most everything. However, are there going to be things that like don't fall well into one of the four or like straddle them? Yeah, of course. Um, so, what am I talking about? Let's say that um, I have. Well, it's not really a problem behavior, but we'll just throw this out there, right? Um, that I cry when I have a bad day at work. And if my husband comes home when he knows I've been having a bad day and crying, he brings me a piece of chocolate cake on his way home and gives me a hug, and then I stop crying. Um, so we want to replace my crying behavior with something else and would like to get a functional reinforcer. So like, is that attention for the hug? Or is it tangible for the cake? Or is it equally both? Or how do I figure out what exactly is going on with what, right? So this is what I mean when I say like what category it fits in isn't super important as long as the replacement behavior gets the same kind of thing. So whatever my replacement behavior is, as long as it results in me feeling better and ceasing the crying, it'll work out. So if in your head you're like, well, what if someone just gave you cake? What if you're crying and you have cake in the house when you have a bad day, does that make you stop crying? If the answer is no, then it's attention, right? Um, so that's an easier one. It's kind of both, but you could spend really a lot of time figuring this out. And ultimately you just have to say like, if I replace the attention component with a robot, would it work? In this case, no, it won't work. I need the hug. And it's nice that someone thought of me to bring me cake. Like the cake is a bonus. Um, another example of when this kind of happens, you know, and it's a fun thought experiment, but functionally it's not that important, is negative reinforcement. Um, it shows up all the time, confusing it with like punishing stimuli. Or like, let's say I have a headache, you give me a Tylenol, I take the Tylenol, it makes my head feel better. Uh, is that negative reinforcement via Tylenol? Is it a, well, yes it is, uh, but is that tangible for the Tylenol? or is it automatic for removing the headache? Um, and we could argue for hours about that, but in the end, does it matter? Um, and this is where I kind of like figure out what actually matters and which parts are important. If one part is acting more like a CMOT, a condition transitive motivating operation, um, meaning that I just need it to get something else. It's not the terminal reinforcer, AKA what I'm really looking for, um, then that's not the class to focus on. So again, if cake's already in the house and that's not gonna do it for me, uh, then the terminal, reinf like the cake is nice. The terminal reinforcer, what I really need is attention in that situation. So if you did any kind of intervention plan for me where I end up getting a cake and no hug, it's not going to work. It's not going to be a good enough reinforcer. Uh, if by some other means my headache was removed 
and it wasn't necessarily Tylenol, we could replace it with anything that gets rid of a headache, like a Cheerio. Would I take Cheerios instead of Tylenol? Like, yeah, absolutely. I just want the headache gone. That's the terminal thing, right? Um, and that's the function you want to focus on more than spending time of like what category it belongs in, all the details around it, what makes the behavior more likely, what the person likes about this stimulus that's functioning as a reinforcer and maintaining a problem behavior or a good behavior. Um, so you want to make sure, because we do the assessments for intervention, right? That's the point is to write a plan with it to be able to use it. Um, if you're getting stuck on like, I don't know if this counts as attention or tangible because someone has to show up to give them the thing, um, do this experiment or actually do it as an experiment. Like the tangible thing someone usually shows up and gives them, have a round, see if it terminates the behavior without the attention part, and then you know it's just the tangible. If it doesn't work, then it's attention. Um, if you replace my Cheerio and get rid of my headache, it's automatic. Like I want the headache gone. I want sensory negative reinforcement, right? Um, so that's the thing to spend your time on. Make sure with your intervention, your replacement behavior, that the person is going to get the same quality of reinforcement and they're really gonna get that itch scratched. So let's say it goes the other way, right? It's not attention. Um, someone can hug me when I'm feeling sad, I won't stop crying, but if they give me cake, boy, do I feel better and it won't hurt under any circumstances. Uh, but if someone shows up and says like, hey, it seems like you're really sad today and could use something to boost your mood, I'd be like, oh my gosh, yes, that would be wonderful, please. And they hand me like a cucumber. I mean, I'd be confused. So there's that, but like, it's not gonna make me feel better. It's not gonna make me stop crying. Is it still under the category of tangible? Sure. Is it even under the subcategory of tangible as an edible reinforcer? Sure. Uh, does that matter? for it functionally working in the context of writing a behavior plan and getting good replacement behavior, it doesn't. It's not scratching the same itch. It's not relevant. It's not what I was burning calories to get. So my advice would be if you get stuck, like don't worry too much about it. If it's one foot in one, one foot in the other, or what category it necessarily is, pick the one that you think it's dominantly controlled by and then spend all of your energy focusing on how they can get that same experience with a more appropriate behavior. That's the important bit. Do you agree? Do you think it's sacrilege for me to say like the exact function out of the four isn't really that important? Uh, let me know in the comments. And if you like this or want to see more of it, don't forget to like and you can follow me on here. And that's it. So I hope you have a great week and thank you. I'll see you next time.